All right, let's see, we've got, let me get everything up here. So hello, I'm Heidi with Opticom and we are going to go over um, what is needed to build an HD, uh, HDTVI system out. So that's a coax system over HD and we're just gonna kind of run through that. It's gonna be really similar to building out an analog system. Um, there's just uh, specific components, not even necessarily components you need, they just need to be TVI compatible in order to make all of this work. So we're gonna run through this, so this would be educational. You can definitely apply this to analog systems as well, any coax system out there. So analog TVI, CVI, AHD, all of that is going to be um, the same equipment that is necessary in order to set up a system and make it work. Um, and it's gonna be a plug and play system as well because there's no IP networking on that. We will do an IP networking version of this down the road, um, but today it is just gonna focus on the HD TVI coax systems. Um, no PowerPoint today. Um, I don't know, I've been building coax systems for 15 years, so I figured we could probably do it without a PowerPoint. So here we go. Um, so the first thing we need to know is, is there an existing system where we're going to put this system? So if you are a facilities manager, uh, do you have an existing system? If you're a distributor of ours, right? Uh, does your customer have an existing system in place? If they do have an existing system in place, what are their plans? Uh, we need to find out what are your plans? Okay, you have a system in place. Are you going to upgrade? Do you just wanna stick with analog? The, the cost difference between TVI and analog is almost non-existent. Um, so I would always recommend if somebody's like, yeah, I have analog, I just need to replace a camera that we go with the TVI option for them. And we'll get through the specifics of what's needed for that as we, as we go. Um, but that's what we need to know. Is there an existing system in place with coax or maybe with Cat5? If so, what are their plans? Are, do they wanna upgrade everything all in one shot? Do they wanna slowly upgrade? Um, so those are the, the kind of things. So yes, we can start swapping out equipment and we would start with the DVR first. Um, and we'll get into the specifics of the DVR, but anytime you make a switch from analog into a TVI or an AHD or even a CVI, you have to make sure that the hardware, the main component that everything's gonna hook into, which is gonna be typically your DVR, is gonna be a hybrid that's gonna accept their old analog cameras, but also accept the new camera. So that's really important. Um, our DVRs are hybrid, so it's not really an issue, um, but going out and moving forward, just the knowledge that you need to know is that it's gonna need to be a hybrid. Um, so existing systems. So let's pretend that they don't have an existing system. This is a brand new system and their budget and their know-how knowledge is going to lend itself to better be with an HDTVI system because you don't want to go and sell someone a system or you don't want to go and install a system yourself that's going to be an IP networking system when you really don't have the knowledge to support that. Um, now, if you're doing a four camera system, it's not that big of a deal, but if you're going to put 16 cameras in or even an eight camera system into a commercial site, um, you want to make sure that you have the know-how on how to actually do that and support that and maintain that because you don't want to be on the phone with tech support all day every day and guys we don't want to be on the phone with tech support all day every day either right so we need to make sure that we're equipping our customers uh with the equipment that's appropriate for them and for their job and their capabilities so no system we're going to go analog HDTVI. okay we've, we've decided that that's the way we're going to go so with HDTVI, what that means is that over coax, just like an analog system, over coax, you can get a high definition signal. So that's gonna be a 1080p, which is the equivalent of a two megapixel image. Um, that could be the equivalent, we could do a five megapixel. Um, so there's a lot of different options in there uh, with resolution. So you go all the way down to the, I think the lowest resolution on the market right now might be uh, like a 680. Um, TV lines, so this is a little bit different. And 700 TV lines, I mean, is definitely sufficient, but when you get into the TVI, you're going to get into that HD high def, like football, I think Sunday football quality um, of resolution. So we can do that. So the first thing to figure that out is gonna be the cameras, right? So we need to determine cameras and camera locations. And we have a training that kind of goes through the basics of CCTV and all the different camera types on the market. So I have a few of them here and we're gonna review them real quick just to help you learn how to make that decision of what the cameras are gonna be. Um, so we'll just run through them. So number one, you've got a box camera. This is what you used to see in the banks. Um, you know, like a bank, you have the big old box camera hanging, kind of staring you in the face. Remember that in like the 90s? I think a lot of banks still have them. Um, so this is a standard box camera. You're probably not gonna go with this. Nobody really uses these very often anymore, okay? So we're mainly gonna look at probably a dome camera or a bullet camera. And so to figure that out, and oh my God, all kinds of stuff hanging off right here. Kind of have everything on my table, bear with me. So this is a bullet camera. So these are ideal for outside, right? So you need to determine, are you gonna go with an inside camera or an outside camera? Um, outside camera, this is a really good fit, right? It's adjustable, it can point different ways. It, you know, it's got infrared usually. So that's an option. Or if you're gonna go inside or outside, a dome camera is a good option. So what we like about dome cameras for this is that it's not threatening. 
So when you walk into a, a store, they typically have dome cameras because then you don't walk in and you don't have this thing. I mean, look at this. It's kind of like this eyeball staring at you. You almost feel like it's going to follow you around, right? Whereas if you have a dome camera, now indoor dome cameras are a little smaller than this, um, but if you have a dome camera, it's just not what they call as threatening. Um, so that's a really great option for indoors. However, this is an outdoor vandal dome camera. Um, so this is a really great option for outdoors or indoors. And again, it has the infrared. So that's what we need to determine. Okay, are we going inside or outside? Um, and if we're going inside or outside, what's going to be the best fit? Okay, we're going to go TVI. So let's say we're going to do indoor dome cameras for an inside job and maybe two bullets outside. Okay, that's great. The style, domes, bullets. Um, infrared, inside or outside, do they need infrared? If they're going to be outside, do they need to be able to see at night? Yeah, if they're gonna put a camera inside looking out a window, we don't wanna have infrared because that's gonna create a reflection and it's gonna distort the image on playback. So we don't wanna do that. So these are little things that we need to think about when we build out any system. And that's gonna be applicable to an IP system or an HDTVI system. Um, infrared will co um, create glare um, if it's up against uh, glass, which is why on all of our equipment here, we've got these rubber rings that separate the infrared from the glass on the cameras, right? So we don't get that reflection. Um, so that's what we need to determine. The lighting, right? What kind of lighting are we going to need? Or is there going to be to where we know what we need to go with? If we're going to do indoor, but they want to see at night when all the lights are off, then we're going to need to make sure we do an indoor infrared dome. Um, and then what are you trying to accomplish, right? Is this going to be used for security? Is this going to be used um, to deter Anything from happening? You know, a lot of people like to say, hey, I want to catch the guys when something happens. Well, that's all fine and dandy. And I think that's fantastic. You can catch, you can prosecute, right? And that's fine. But I'm thinking to myself, I'd rather just deter it from happening altogether, right? Wouldn't you rather have a big old, so that's what you need to consider. If they want to deter it, then you need to have a big camera that people, when they walk up to a place from a security standpoint, people are going to see this camera and know that they're being recorded versus a tiny little dome camera. You know, like we have those little mini, mini vandal dome cameras, which are great and they're gonna catch the act, but that's fine if you're just going to persecute or prosecute somebody or persecute. Um, but you know, but you wanna make sure that if it's for de deterrent, as a deterrent, that you can deter that. Um, so security, right? What are they trying to accomplish with that too? Same idea, the, the deterrent. And then you've got surveillance. Maybe it's just for video surveillance. Um, we do a lot of industrial stuff. So for a camera that's gonna go into an industrial market, we're not gonna use you know, this dome or this bullet probably, right? We're gonna go into, and I didn't pull any of them out, into one of our industrial cameras. So that's why we need to make sure that we know what kind of application we're using so we can determine the camera. Okay, so now you go, you've determined all your cameras, you have all your camera locations, where you're gonna put them, you know the lighting, you know the distances because you're gonna to need to know what lenses they need, right? So you've got your list distances, you're ready. Okay, cameras. Now. The next thing you need to figure out is what kind of cable are they gonna run, right? So let's see, so we could do RG59, RG6, you could do CAT5E, CAT6, a lot of different options. So if you go with an RG59 or an RG6, we always recommend that you go with um, like a compression crimp, and I'll put this up kind of close. This is a compression crimp connector, um, or not crimp, a compression connector versus the old, uh, the twists, they used to be like a, a male twist. Um, or the, the crimp, the two-piece or the three-piece crimps, right? This is going kind of way back. Um, I don't know if some of you have even sold this on here, but I see Bob Fee on there, and I know you were selling this stuff. You've been doing this a long time, man. Um, but yeah, so you've got these. We always recommend the compressions. Now they're water waterproof, but that's what you're going to do with an RG59 or an RG6. And then you've also got the option to do a Cat5e or Cat6. So I like this option because then, you know what, in six years, when they maybe decide to upgrade again, because technology is advanced and prices have come down and they want to go with an IP networking system, they've already got their infrastructure in place for that, right? We're talking small systems for that kind of stuff. Infrastructure's in place and they've got Cat5 everywhere. So what you can do with that then is you can go with, put this stuff really far away, um, you can go with video balance. So we've got a few different ones. So like here's one, you know, you take your Cat5, it goes right into the little terminals there. And it's got a little whip, which is super, super helpful when you're on like a DVR or something, because then you've got it, right? And then that's your BNC that you're um, that would go into your DVR um, or to the back of your camera, I'm sorry. And same thing, we've got these little two packs and it's gonna be the exact same thing. It's just a straight skinny one. It's just a preference thing. And then you've also got a, a video balloon that's powered. So this one's gonna get you a little more distance. It comes with two parts. This is our VB04 HD. So this does TVI. So that's another thing. If you say, hey, we're gonna do, um, TVI, or you go into a place that has an existing cable infrastructure in place, and they have Cat5, and they have video balance. If that was put in place five or six years ago, those video balance have to be swapped out too, right? You have to have video balance 
that are compatible with TVI. So just so you know, TVI runs over coax, still has a BNC connection, but it's a digital signal versus the analog signal. So that's why some of the existing equipment may not work if you're going in and replacing versus start from scratch. And if you are starting from scratch, you want to make sure that, um, I mean, like I say, you're just going with us and call us and we're gonna do it. But whatever you're gonna do, I want you to make sure that you are talking to someone who's educated and can make sure that you have all the equipment that you need so that everything's gonna work together. Um, we get a lot of people that call and um, will you know, take a part and build a system for somebody and then they're calling us two weeks later like, hey, it doesn't work. And we're like, well, dude, Where'd you get those balance from, right? Oh, we ordered them on Amazon. Well, super. They don't work with TVI stuff, right? So that's the kind of stuff we come into. So you just want to do your, your due diligence ahead of time. So these are going to be um, TVI compatible. I believe they're AHD and CVI. We don't carry any AHD or CVI um, products. Uh, we stick mainly with TVI just because that's kind of whenever it all came out at the same time, that was the, the winner. Um, it had the best technology, the best, I mean, pretty much it just topped everything else. So that's what we've gone through or gone with. Um, and move forward with in the last five years. And it's been really, really successful. Moving right along. Um, so then we have got power. So the next thing, so you've got cable. So if you go with a cat or an RG59, boom, you can run your power and your video on that, which is excellent. Um, like the VBO4, you can run your power and your video on that Cat5. Um, so that makes it really, really simple. And I know from um, a security standpoint, when you're in the commercial and the residential market, that's really not a problem because most people will run power and video together back to the DVR. Uh, but when we get into the industrial markets, what we see a lot when we walk around, I've walked a lot of facilities, right? And I see these guys, they're powering their cameras locally at each spot. So they'll have a camera like our CCO2 is an um, industrial camera. So they'll have that camera there and then they'll have a 110 um, right there. So they can power it right there. And I will talk to these guys and tell them, hey, why don't you run your power back to the DVR? And they're like, well, how do we do that? So instead of, nobody's told a lot of people that there's Siamese cable out there that allows you to do that kind of stuff, right? Sorry, I lost you for a second there. Um, but there's Siamese cable that allows you to do that. And no one has, has told anybody that. So that's really, really important that you educate yourself if you're at a facility. You educate your customers and let them know that you can do that, okay? So you need to make sure that you're educating people that this is available on the market. Um, Scott, I saw you pop up with a, hold on, I got my mouse all the way over here. Let me see what you got, man. This is how, there it is, there's the chat. Oh, no, 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 all right. I saw something pop up, um, but it's not popping up on here. You private, oh, because it's on here. Okay, so I'll get back to you, Scott. Um, next, let's see. So recording, oh, your power, I'm sorry. So you want to make sure that they know that the Siamese comes back on that power. Um, that way they're not powering locally because they're, what they're doing, just so you're in the loop with this guys, when you go into a facility and they're powering it locally, instead of running, they're running the video cable all the way back to the DVR, but then they're running conduit and everything for power to install an actual 110, um, wall thing. I'm not in the electrical field, guys. I'm in the uh, camera business. Uh, so all of you on here probably know what I'm talking about. But the 110 with the two plugs, right? So they're running all of that to do that. Laura would definitely know what I'm talking about because she comes from that industry. <laughs> and she's on here. Um, but so, so that's what they're doing. So we just want to make sure people are educated that that's an option. Don't assume. Don't assume that people know things. Um, okay, so next we've got recording. And I brought a DVR right over here for us, right? So this is just a four-channel unit. I just grabbed one. Um, so super simple, sleek, great, four channels on the back. You've got uh, your four B and Cs. Um, so this is gonna be your input. This is gonna do a split screen quad, um, a quad screen, four, one, two, three, four, right? Like a, um, it's got an HDMI output, a VGA output, a USB port. Uh, you can put this on the network as well. And then you've got audio in and alarm in and alarm out. So in RS-485 for PTZ controls. So this is pretty standard. So our DVRs, like I said earlier, are dual, right? So that means they do analog and TVI. So this is important, uh, number one, if you're going into a place that has an existing analog system. The very first thing you wanna replace for them, even if they're like, oh, my recorder's good, but I wanna go all TVI. The very first thing you replace for them is gonna be your, um, the recorder, because then they can put that in place. And, and these aren't super expensive guys. I mean, they're, they're pretty basic and standard nowadays. Um, not basic, but 
all the features that used to be bells and whistles back in the day are now standard on DVRs. So what you'll do is you'll do that. Then all of their existing analog systems are going to work with that new DVR. And then as you add the TVI cameras, those will work as well. So it's going to accept both technologies in that way. So it's really important that that's the first thing that you replace when you do this. Um, let's see. Hang on one second. Let me pull this up real quick. Not to throw myself off, but I don't want to not answer you, Scott. Oh my goodness. Scott, you're ridiculous. I stopped for that. He's asking me if I'm taking quad shots from Starbucks. I talk fast and I have a lot of energy, guys. <laughs> it's a blessing and a curse. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> you're ridiculous. Um, then you want to find out how many channels does your, does your customer need? Does your facility need? By channels, we mean how many cameras. So are you going to do a uh, four channel system? Do you need eight cameras? Do you need 16 cameras? Do you need 32 cameras? How big is the area? So that's really important because you don't want to say, oh, it's four cameras and then, you know, it's six. And another thing, if the customer's like, yep, we're going to do four cameras. Okay, that's great. Are you, I mean, is there any chance that you're going to increase that or maybe want one more camera down the road? I always try to go one size higher on a DVR when we're talking about a coax system. Always. It is a minimal, minimal cost difference. Okay. So I always try to go one size or one size heart higher than what they actually want, because you know how many times people put cameras in and then you always hear, Oh man, I wish I would have put one there. That would have been a good spot. They may not realize it for a month or two or six, but to have that expansion available and just tell them, Hey, you can do it now for I'm just making up numbers here for a hundred bucks more. Or if you do it later, you're going to have to buy a whole nother unit and that's going to cost you $400. I don't know. I'm just, again, throwing out numbers. Um, so that's what you want to kind of position yourself when you're talking to a customer because you're not doing it for you. It's not necessarily to increase your sale. It's, it's not, not about that guys. It's about making sure the customer has what they need and what's going to serve them best. Um, so that's really important. Then storage, you want to find out how long they want to store their data, right? Some people are like, Oh, I want three months. Three months of storage is not cheap, guys. So talk to your customer. Well, what's going to happen in three months? I mean, if you get broken into, or you'll probably know that in like a day or two, right? Maybe over the weekend, maybe three days on an extended weekend. So have conversations because a lot of people have ideas in their head of what security systems are, but they don't really understand what that means. So have a conversation. Well, why would you need three months? What is three months going to do for you? What's going to happen in three months? And find out if they legitimately want three months because you know what? That is where the price is going to skyrocket because storage is expensive, right? That's just the reality of what it is. And to get the storage that's meant for DVRs, it's, or NVRs even, right? It's a specialized hard drive. And if you're not using specialized hard drives, we should have a conversation. Um, but it's hard drives that are meant for 24 seven video, constantly recording. It's different from a computer hard drive that stores data and it sits and it stores data and it sits. So it's very different. So your money, your cost comes in a lot whenever you go into the storage part of it. So you just wanna have that conversation with the customer. Let them know, hey, you can start here and down the road, you can add another hard drive and you can increase that if you need it. Um, remote viewing, motion detection, the alarm, all those features are pretty standard now. So the remote viewing is going to have, um, or at least on our units, right, um, where you can log in through just the IP address. You can log in through the software that's included. You can log in. We also have a CMS software. So if they had multiple locations or if they ended up putting multiple units in one location, you could link them all together and view them over one CMS software as if it's one cohesive system. So I love that feature. It's really cool. And that actually plays well with our NVRs as well. So you can do NVR IP systems and DVR systems and link them as if it's one system. So it's super cool and it's a really great way to kind of hybrid into an analog TV and an IP system. Um, remote viewing, and then it's also got apps, of course, right, for um, Android and for iPhone and Mac compatible and all of, all of the goods, right? So um, that is all there as well. Then you've got your monitor. So I actually, this is the first trade I grabbed the monitor for, and I don't even know which one this is, let me see. I literally just saw it laying down somewhere. It was out of the box. I think they were using it to do something. Uh, this is 17 inch. So it's a FSM 17B monitor. So it's metal housing. This is one of our um, commercial slash industrial monitors. I love these things. They're like heavy duty, right? These are not cheap, like, you know, whatever monitors that you're going to get somewhere, right? They're super durable, industrial for commercial applications. Um, so this is a 17 inch monitor. So you need to figure out, do you need an industrial monitor or is it a commercial monitor? Where is this going, right? If you're going to an industrial site, then you're going to want to go with an industrial monitor. But if you're putting it in a mini storage in the office, mm, 
you know, there's a cost difference. So you need to determine and weigh that out and find out the best fit for your customer. And then you need to determine what size they want. Yeah, everybody wants a 50 inch monitor. Well, but if it doesn't fit on their wall, right, it just doesn't make sense. So be conscious or conscientious about what they can fit and what they can do. I mean, what's going to work and what's going to be best for them. Don't try to tell them that they have to have a 50 inch monitor to see four cameras because you know what, that's just not true. So, I mean, unless they're, you know, 80 feet back, right? But I mean, so, and everybody sells different. I like to make sure people have what they need, not what I want to sell. So, all right. So just, you know, use your mind, guys. Let's, let's serve people the best that we can serve them with this kind of stuff. Um, then you need to determine if there's a BNC or a CCTV, like if they need a BNC monitor, which is a CCTV monitor. So the difference, right? Because this is important. Most people ask, well, why would I want a CCTV monitor when I can just go buy the cheap, you know, $200 monitor from Best Buy? Big question. And I'm sure that is uh, something uh, that y'all come up across all the time, uh, an objection that you come across. So industrial monitors, or not industrial, I'm sorry, CCTV monitors, number one, they have a BNC input on the back. So when you get to certain places, sometimes people want to run a camera right into a monitor. And that's the easiest way to do it. Then you're not converting it. So you're not losing any signal, anything like that. So you're just, boom, right there into the monitor. So that's one really great perk. Otherwise, it's got like 3D, interla 3D D interlace and other features that lend itself to a higher quality picture coming from a CCTV camera or from a DVR system into a monitor versus what you're going to get when you put it into a DVR and bring it out through an HDMI or through a VGA especially, right? Um, so it's just meant for CCTV, kind of the same way we talk about the hard drives. They're built for CCTV. Um, so that's something. Now, that being said, if you're doing a four camera system at a gas station and the guy and you're competing with Sam's Club, then I'm not going to tell you to go get a CCTV monitor because you're never going to, that guy does not need to have that crisp of quality on his monitor because his DVR is still going to record that excellent quality. So, right, so you need to know that. So when he downloads an event or an incident, he's still going to have that high resolution, even if he has a monitor that doesn't support that high of resolution. So there's an economy monitors too, right? So we've got 19 and a half and a 21 and a half that are super basic, simple monitors, get the job done, very similar to a computer monitor. Um, so those are available as well. So know your customer, know the needs on this. So TVI, here's one thing I do tell people. On a TVI system, you're getting a 1080p HD resolution camera. Perfect but then people put it on a 10 inch monitor or monitor that doesn't support 1080p, right? I'm gonna tell you right now, if it is a 19 and a half and up, it's 1080p. If it's under 19 and a half inches, it's not 1080p. And that's not an Opticom thing, that's a technology thing. It doesn't exist yet. So if somebody's putting it out there, they can't get the ratio of the 16.9 and a smaller monitor yet. Um, so, so think about that. If you're customer, oh, I only need 15. Well, buddy, you're paying for all of this high definition and you're not even gonna have a seat on your screen. So again, that's something you want to talk and just, again, educate the customer. Don't assume they know. I didn't know until somebody told me, right? Same thing if you go out and you sell an IP system and it's all 4K. Okay, well, we've got a 4K system, but we're doing a monitor that only supports 1080p. It just doesn't make sense, right? So you want people to be able to utilize the benefits that they're paying for. They're paying extra money to have a high quality system. Well, buddy, just pay the extra couple of bucks to, to have the monitor that matches, if that makes sense. I don't know why I always mix a little sales in with my my presentation, sorry. Okay, um, VGA monitor, right. So that would be like a VGA monitor would be kind of our economy type monitor. Um, all of our monitors do have a VGA input on them, but our, our other one is just an HDMI and VGA with no B and C on that non um, CCTV monitor. So power, oh yeah, I talked about it and then I kind of skipped right over it, sorry about that. So the power, so two things. So sometimes you have a camera and let me see if one of these have it. Yes, perfect, this one has a plug. So power, when you're running that Siamese cable for power, or if you're just running another power cable, it doesn't necessarily have to be Siamese. You've got a camera, if it's a DC 12 volt power supply or a DC 12 volt camera, it's going to have a plug like this. Okay. So that's your DC 12. That always is going to tell you it's like a DC 12 volt in the camera industry. Okay. So here's what happens is people go and then they cut the wire. What happens when you cut the wire on anyone's camera? You void the warranty, right? So for like a couple bucks, no lie, I'm not exaggerating. You get this little pigtail, right? You see one end is bare wire and the other end is a plug that plugs right in. So then you've got, let's see, you've got this, you plug it right in and then there's your, you know, in theory when it fits. Yeah. And then there's your bare leads. So nobody has to clip the wire. This is like a $2 accessory that you add on to every system whenever they're running RG59 and not using, or RG6 or Cat5, whatever, and not using um, the wall work directly, right? 
So same thing. And then we've got it for the other end as well. So if they've got a power supply on the other end, that's going to plug in here. Power supply plugs into the wall and this bare wire is going to go to that spool of um, coax or um, power wire. Okay. So that's really simple and really important. Do not let cut people cut the cables on the power supplies and on the cameras because they void warranties. And that's not fair to them because again, they probably just don't know that there's a better way. So we like to educate people. Hey, there's a better way. You're not doing it wrong. There's just a better way to do it, right? So that's really important to know that you can do that. Um, distributed power supplies. Some cameras come with power supplies. Some cameras do not. That's across the board. Um, so just check. Make sure you have a power supply um, either in the box or just ask. You know, If you call our office, you can ask anybody you speak with. And I'm sure anybody else you deal with the same thing. Um, so you can do a wall wart or you can do a distributed power supply. Distributed power supplies are cool. You can get a four channel, eight channel. 16, 18 channel uh, with different amperage on the channels, right? And they come in 12 volt DC and then they come in 24 volt AC. And that's just a whole bunch of fuses in a box, right? It's like box like yay. Whole bunch of fuses, put it right next to your DVR. You run all your cameras back on that Siamese cable, whether it's, you know, category cable or not. Um, and you run them all back and you run your power to the box and your video to the DVR and you plug it all in. So one thing, and I should have probably drawn this out before we started, but I like to do, I'm just using scrap paper that happens to be here. So anytime I build a system, oh, I can't draw and I can't draw at all. So don't, don't worry, this isn't gonna be good. Um, this is how I always visualize a system, just so you know, and maybe you'll do the same thing and maybe it'll help. And maybe you'll be like, oh, you're crazy, Heidi. How could that actually help you? Um, Okay, here's my kindergarten sketch, right? So in my head, I mentally start from end to finish and it's kind of the way that we go, right? So I start from the camera and then I do power and I build out my system like camera. Okay, I need a connector from here to the cable, cable to the connector, connector to the power supply. Boom, there's my power, it's done. I go back to the camera, camera, connector to the cable for video. Go connector to the DVR, DVR to the connector to the cable, to the monitor, right? With the connector right there and then a monitor mount, whatever else I need. But I, in my head, that's what I have visually as I do this. So it's this piece and then it's this piece and then it's this piece. Same thing with an IP system. It's this and then it's this and then it's this. If you have trouble visualizing that, the only thing that's going to change that is for you to go full product, put it in front of you, look at it and put it together. And that's what it was, years of me putting pieces together and testing products whenever customers would call and say, hey, does this camera do this? I don't know. Go in the warehouse, pull it and check, right? So that's, and that's it, you know? So, but that's the best way for me to remember all of the components when I'm building out a system is just to visually see them there. So, um, so that's it, guys. That's everything you need. But the core components, you know, there's accessories involved, but camera, power, recording device of some sort, and then your monitor, right? And then all the pieces in between, which is gonna be mounts and brackets and connectors and converters um, and power. I pulled a couple different converters here, right? So I've got, this one is the, what is this? The KIV HD002, right? So this is really great. So if you've got a TVI camera, it's not gonna plug directly into a monitor that you have that has a B and C, unless it's a TVI specific monitor. Right, so there's some things when you go with TVI, right? So we've got TVI monitors and then we've got standard analog for anybody else monitors, right? So a TVI camera has to go into a TVI monitor because it's that digital input on the BNC and not the analog input. So this actually converts your TVI signal to an analog or to an HDMI or to a VGA. So if you needed to take one camera and go straight to a monitor, this would convert that for you. Then I also pulled, you know what, I pulled that one, but I don't know why I pulled it. So we will talk about that. Um, but that was just so you know, that's the KIV uh, HD002, and we sell a good bit of those. Um, they move pretty often because it, it's a converter, and it doesn't just have to be TVI. You can convert um, a BNC CVVS, a 960H signal, over to that VGA or to that um, HDMI as well with that one. So that's a really good one. Um, so we've got all kinds of parts and accessories, guys. The last thing I had was if you've got somebody that wants to install it themselves or if you're an installer yourself or if you're selling to an installer that's going to install this somewhere is i just put the test monitor as you know this is something that everybody should have so if anybody is out there installing equipment they should have a test monitor um that was it right because then you can just plug in right there with the camera the benefit of that for some of y'all that maybe don't know why 
is um, this one's really cool. It programs like IP addresses and all kinds of stuff. It's like across the board of this TVIA. It's really cool. But is that you can sit there at the camera and while you selling the system may not really care, the installer will really, really care and be grateful that somebody said he should have one. Um, or a facility manager that doesn't realize that it's even a thing because they're not in our industry. They're in a whole nother industry. They're just using our equipment, right? They'll really appreciate this. Um, then you're at the camera and you've got it installed and you plug it in and you can adjust the varifocal, you can adjust the settings, everything to where you're right there. Before test monitors, for those of you who haven't been around long enough, it was like walkie talkies or you call each other up, somebody's at the monitor and then somebody's at the camera. Okay, how about now? Nope, still out of focus, right? I mean, could you imagine how long that takes? It takes a really long time to do that, right? To focus things and install things. Um, I and mean, what if you do the whole system and then you go fire it up and there's not power? come into anything, right? You can test every camera as you install. So test monitors are super important for this. Um, I will pull this up real quick with all of the, or not all of the, but the lovely messages we have. Um, yeah, Scott, so yeah, you're right. So um, new federal regulations toward competition such as hike vision due to most products, yes. Yeah, so those of you who don't know, um, well, we'll finish this up and I'll answer that question. I'm gonna turn the recording off on this, but um, but cool. So that is the HDTVI coax on here. So let me pull this up real quick. 